So I know that Euphoria is a pretty controversial series. And the thing is, is that I think it's a great show. I'm gonna say it right now because it's real. It is actually relatable. I've lived in so many different cities. I've lived in West Virginia. I've lived in Washington, DC. I've lived in New York City. And I'm currently living in Europe and Amsterdam. And even though I know the show is about teens and a lot of people are mad that there's so much nudity being shown and these are supposed to be teenagers and whatever. But like the truth is, is that a lot of people are going through a lot of those different stories in the show. A lot of people have addictions. A lot of people have been abused. A lot of people have had just tough times with their own family. And the truth is, is that if it feels like it's controversial, maybe we should focus more on society and these problems that seem to be stemming from everywhere in every which direction, no matter what socioeconomic status, no matter what language, no matter what religion, you can find these problems in households across the world. So is the show controversial or is reality and the life that we are creating together collectively actually the problem? You know what I mean? So that is why I think the show is so good because I'm somebody that I feel like I feel like my life is good. And I feel like I, at this point, I'm 32 years old. I would say ever since I went to college and moved out on my own, I've been my own person and I've loved my life. And I lived in New York City and I really was killing it. I'm a personal trainer, I'm a DJ, I'm a group fitness instructor. You know, I had a cute one bedroom apartment. I've traveled the world. I've done things like that for myself. I have a boyfriend, he's my soulmate. So I feel like in a lot of ways, I have the things that we all want. We all want work and job that fulfills us. We want to be with somebody that we love and makes us feel really good about who we are. And we want a nice place to live and we want to just be healthy and fit and all those sort of things. Of course, it's just that I see myself and I see my past and I see so many situations that I've been in in that show. So many of those situations are painfully relatable, truly. And I think one of the biggest things that most people can relate to is a lot of the sexual pressures in that show. There's a lot of people just pushing and sort of pressuring people into sexual things or making them feel uncomfortable se uncomfortable sexually. And I think that that's the stuff that really has triggered me the most, not in a bad way, because I don't let anyone or anything have me bothered anymore. I gotta be unbothered, boo, I gotta... Skincare is stress care. If you wanna have nice skin, if you wanna prevent yourself from going gray, you gotta stay unbothered. You gotta just mind your business, drink your water and not let anyone or anything get to you. So even though I've been through some stuff, you know, I've been followed home before by people in Harlem. Like I don't even wanna speak that into existence, but there are some pretty weird people that I used to live by living in Harlem when I lived in New York and people that used to come to my gym that were really disgusting and gross. And I've had moments where I've had to report people. So I'm not saying it's all, you know, fun and games all the time. And that is what I think the show is so good at highlighting, is that these people, these beautiful teens and their middle-class lifestyle, they have education, they have money, they have families. How could things go awry? And that's a good question we have to ask ourselves because it's like, we're out here working so hard. We're out here fighting for our freedoms. And we all say we want a family and we all say we want love. And then there's so many people out in these relationships that are cheating. Like the guy on the show, he's cheating with a trans person on his wife and there's so much infidelity and there's so much backstabbing and there's so much out there that's like, we as people, we need to really get our shit together. And it starts by really deciding on what we are going to allow into our lives and deciding on what's healthy and what isn't, what's normal and what isn't. And I think Euphoria is just, it is an unfortunate reminder of the ways in which we need to work on ourselves. And sometimes I'm all about the positive. Look, I'm usually about the positive. I'm usually about, I'm an internal optimist and I like to focus on what's good. And I totally understand that we use our words to speak whatever we want into existence. I totally am aware of that. That's why I'm very conscious of even what I'm saying now in this video and what I want to say about things. I just know that trying to always avoid stuff with just slapping, just be positive and move on over it isn't always the answer. So euphoria is a great conversation because it's like, this can stop with you. No matter what you've been through in your life, you can break generational curses. And you see a lot of these teens and they're following in the footsteps of their parents. Like there's a character, Cassie, you know, she's all insecure and weak, like her mom. Nate, he's all abusive and, and secretive, like his dad. You know what I mean? There's, you see that a lot that it's like, okay. And of course, as children, 
we do pick up what our parents do. Of course, up until the age of seven, we're just literally a subconscious sponge soaking up all the information. So a lot of times they say, you know, within the first seven years of your life, that is when the core of you is built and your personality and your traits and your relationships. I just think that's bullshit. I know that you can choose to change any time. And maybe it might be harder later in life, but you can choose to change any time. Because if I had followed what my family had given me as guidelines, I would not be here running my own business with a healthy relationship. You know what I mean? Like I said, even though I came from a quote unquote good family, there's just a lot of shit that I, I'm not here to explain my own personal family trauma, but like I had one of those families, let's say on Euphoria, where it looks like on the outside, you have this nice suburban family, but behind closed doors, there's a lot of nuanced, emotionally traumatizing things that might be happening and that can't even be explained in one video. It's almost like you just would have had to be there. So yeah, I think Euphoria is really helping people even just come to grips with the fact that almost everybody is going through something. Almost everybody goes through something because the challenges are part of how we change ourselves for the better. And it's how you deal with those challenges and how you face the challenges that matter. Because you can cower in the face of fear and you can get angry right back and you could fight somebody and use physical violence and you can avoid your problems with drugs. And I'm not saying, you know, I understand addiction is a real disease and I lived in places, like I said, when I lived in New York, there was a lot of rehab facilities. And fortunately, I'm not somebody that has ever had addiction, but even growing up in West Virginia, I know a lot of people use those opioids and oxycotons and things like that. So it's some real shit. It really is. And I think we all have to turn inwards and critique ourselves instead of critiquing the show. And a lot of times we think that we're just doing just fine and we don't have problems and we're not part of the problem. And I think that's also one of the problems. Like for instance, Nate's dad, he's out here having sex with trans people all the time. And there's moments that he feels guilty about cheating on his wife and not being true to himself. But overall, the, the behavior keeps repeating. So you don't feel that guilty if you're not willing to change the behavior. So changing your behavior, changing your reaction to things, that's what Euphoria is reminding me of is like, Rue, the main character, Zendaya's character, she has so many emotional breakdowns and things. And it's like, I see my teen self in her. Like I, I've had breakdowns like that where you're just screaming and irrational and stuff. But like, you gotta choose to stop doing that at a certain point. Because it's one thing when you're a teen, yeah, maybe you're a teen, you're hormonal, you have breakdowns, but a lot of people end up carrying those things into adulthood. You know, a lot of people end up carrying that violence and that trauma into adulthood. And that's when it costs them a lot more. Like if you ever got in trouble as a teen, you go to teen court. If you get in trouble as an adult, you go to adult court. And I think it's sad that a lot of times in America, especially, you know, we use law enforcement as a band-aid if somebody's having a mental health crisis and they do something out of the sake of trauma, you know, we, we're so quick to reprimand people and not heal them and rehabilitate them. So it's like, hopefully you don't get yourself in that situation so you could just start healing and rehabilitating yourself and prevent that stuff. Because like I said, if I had followed the trajectory of what society had told me who I was supposed to be when I was a young age, I'd still be overweight. I'd still be struggling. I, I wouldn't have a man and that's the thing i changed all of that for myself i decided like hmm struggling and drama and having terrible times isn't fun and you can choose to not participate in those stories like i'm not saying that you can always turn off your trauma and you, you can just turn off feeling bad but in a way you sort of can I, honestly i think that you can totally overcome almost any mental problem just through your own mental willingness to change it. And I know that there's a lot of psychiatrists and psychologists out there probably disagreeing with me and that's okay. I just know that we all have the power within to decide the society and life we want. And it starts with one small seed, man. One small seed can grow into an entire garden if you water it and take care of it. So one person sharing one idea can create a ripple effect. It can be a great reminder for everybody that Instead of being mad at a show for showing supposed, you know, teen nudity when all of those adults are adults. Like one of the cast members, Maddie, I love her character so much. She's so hot, she's so cool. She's portraying a 17 year old and she's 31. Like, I know, you know what I mean? Just, just get over it. Like, and I think it's shocking. It's shocking to have 
the teen element to it because if it's just adults we sometimes just brush it off as like ah they're just a fucked up adult but if you're a fucked up adult it's probably because you were a fucked up kid so i think euphoria is showing how this happens to kids and it carries on into adulthood because look i totally understand there's some shows out there that shouldn't be on there i think on netflix there's like this series called cuties and it's a whole bunch of little girls that are like cheerleaders and it's really gross and it's weird to see like actual seven and eight year olds in little bikinis and dancing like i didn't watch it i will never watch it it disgusts me to even think about that there's one thing to have a show like that where it is actually exploiting actual children and it's another to have 30 year olds and 20 year olds portraying teens to share a message of like hey this is what happens to a lot of high schoolers and truly when i was in west virginia like like i said i've had an interesting as far as where I've lived, I've lived in so many different places. I lived in the suburbs of West Virginia, in Morgantown, which was very much like Euphoria. It's very much high school musical. I had that very all-American upbringing, you know, football is life, homecoming queen. I went to prom, I was in my school plays. Like I had a very all-American high school upbringing. And there was a lot of Euphoria in my high school. A lot of those characters, I can name my childhood friends as those characters. And I remember just so many times like, girls would go and lose their virginity. I hate that term, lose their virginity. I, I, I'm not a fan of that term, but just to, so you guys know, they would go on their lunch break and then they'd come back and everybody would be texting about it. Like everybody would just find out within minutes and there would always be drama like that. People hooking up with teachers in the school, like that's actually happened in my high school, you know? And I say that because it's, I grew up in, like I said, all American high school and I also have lived in New York where I've seen addicts. I've seen the same things happen in New York. Like I said, I went to a gym and there was this guy that would like follow me and stuff and it was creepy. And I've lived in Amsterdam now for three years and you see some of this here. Amsterdam is very human rights friendly. It's definitely the safest and most open-minded place I've been, but I've seen gay and trans people being beaten up for being gay and trans. I've seen people get their bikes stolen at knife point in broad daylight. I've seen that. I've seen people get shot, not in Amsterdam, but in New York. When I lived in Washington, DC, you see the addicts. So all I'm saying is we see what we wanna see and I see the positive and I see the light and everything and I have a beautiful life and I've turned my pain into power. The thing is though, is that we have to make sure that all of us are doing good. We have to make sure that all of us are on the same page about we, what we want for society and the kids we choose to raise. Because I think about that a lot. I'm like, when I have a kid one day, I just can't imagine them going to school and then they end up with some person in their class that has them trying fentanyl in the bathroom. Like that's crazy, but that could happen. You could be just a normal everyday suburbs kid and then you have a cool friend in class and they slip you a little drug and the next thing you know, you're an instant addict. So as much as you can do your part, we have to make sure we're all doing our part. And I think Euphoria is a really great reminder of we gotta do better, man. And some of those girls, their outfits, their style, they're so beautiful, they got swag. And like a lot of those guys in the show, they're fit and they play sports. And you can tell all the characters in the show, they're gonna go to college. And like I said, they all have money, but that's material outside shit. We're spiritual beings. All the material 3D stuff, that's cool, we need it. The thing is, is that we have to lead and live from our higher selves. What would our higher selves want? We want a good planet to live on. We want good people to be around. We want good food to eat. We don't want stress. We don't want drama. So I think that Euphoria, yes, it's a little dark. The lighting is really great. I love the creative directing as far as the outfits are cool. The makeup is cool. And the music is really good. And I think the story is good. Like I said, I'm in episode three or four. Maybe I'll finish the series. Maybe I won't. I think I'll, I'll keep going for now. I just wanted to share my thoughts on it while it was fresh and I think that the darkness is a good contrast to the light because if we didn't have darkness, we wouldn't necessarily know the light. So go listen to something else, go listen to some positive affirmations after you watch Euphoria and you'll be good. I don't like to watch Euphoria like right before I go to bed because then it's like, you gotta be careful because when your brain is about to go to sleep, you're, you're channeling the more theta waves, maybe even just the more relaxing brain waves and your brain is more receptive to things. And I truly think that once you see an image once, even if you don't remember it, it's kind of implanted in your subconscious mind. So definitely be mindful of what you consume. 
And I remember thinking that because a lot of people were saying, oh, euphoria is so dark, it's so negative, it's so this, it's so that. But like I said, sometimes it's good to go back, see the contrast, see where you've been in these stories. Remember why you need to keep going in the right direction when you see these stories and seeing how, you know, it could have played out if you would have kept going in that direction and being happy that you decided it didn't. So that's what I wanted to say about that. We are all the main characters of our own stories. So let's create a story collectively that we like. Let's make euphoria actually euphoric. I think euphoria is such a, a good word and feeling happy and feeling just truly connected and present in the moment will bring you a lot of euphoria. So with that being said, if you like this video, if you want more about this pop culture, my thoughts on these shows and these music and everything like that, comment below, let me know, because I'll definitely make more videos and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss them. And until then, I'll see you then. Bye.